this uh, when you face an offense like this, I know you need all 11 guys doing what they do, but are, are there any positions that are special? I mean, is it D tackles, the middle linebacker, the guys up the middle that are especially important, or is it really just all of us? It's all of them got to be disciplined. No one really has to be special as far as the football player goes. Maybe the safeties, I would say. I think Jordan Whitehead and Darius Webb and Devontae Pitts and Pat Amaro uh, probably got maybe the hardest job because of you know, all the arc releases are getting out to them, and sometimes they run, sometimes they pass. You run by one of those guys, but you stop an option, and he runs by you. You know, you don't know what he's doing. Is he running the route, or is he? So those are probably the most critical guys. You have to have great eye control Saturday to stop the run, but also not give up. You know, if you watch every game, there's a big pass, and there's somebody that's wide open. Okay, and it won't be a busted coverage. It's busted eye control. Uh, so we worked hard all week on that, and. Um, but, uh, you know, it'll probably happen once a game. You know, you probably expect it. It's nothing you're going to get on the sideline and say, what are you guys doing? I know what they're doing. You know, there's option, 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 and then all of a sudden that pass goes by you. So we've worked hard on uh, trying to give them that look. I know, why don't more teams use the cut block technique? Well, it depends on what kind of offense you, you know, you're, you're running. Why is it conducive to that offense? Because um, they want all angle blocks on you, and, and they, it's just one for one instead of, you know, our offense is usually comboing up to somebody else. Normal offenses mm -hmm. are doing that. Uh, and the spread option is, it's, it's, you know, it's all angle blocks. You know, mm -hmm. the, it's a center going up with the Mike linebacker trying to cut him down. So they want to get people on the ground and try to get people that have certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You guys, I know you sort of break down before and after practice. You know, that's the goal for this team this season. But how do you sort of reconcile, like, having those big picture goals with keeping a tunnel vision? focus on one game every week. Well, I mean, that's what it is. It's a one-game season every week. And, you know, you can also, you can have your goals, you know, but, you know, every week, we, you know, we have our, our weekly goals, okay? You know, but, you know, we see it, okay? <laughs> you guys will pause that stuff. Are. But, you know, every coach, every player's got, you know, in their pocket, that, you know, what do you want to do for the week? You know, ultimately, you know what the long-term goal is, but what do you want to do weekly goals? So every Sunday, we give the kids goal cards and, hey, what do you want to do this week? You know, not, not just in football, but what do you want to do in in life, what do you want to do in school? Hey, I gotta make sure I study every night for this exam. So we try to, hey, you know, what's your plan for the week? Is it Sunday? Yeah, Coach. Uh, how, was your, how has your team been in that regard? Uh, you know, dividing up football, academics, and everything. They've done a nice doing. job. You know, talking to Mike Farabaum, academically they're doing a nice job. You know, they've had midterms the last two weeks and had a lot of guys in there studying as well. So. Sometimes we forget you guys never ask us academic questions. You know? uh, nobody you know, on the outside cares about that. They want to know, you know, you want to know about the ors. You know, we got, you know, it's, it's either football or academics for my or that I worry about. And, uh, the kids are doing well. Who's the best student on the team? Gosh, we got a few. There's not one best. You know, we, we, we got a few. We had, uh, I think, last summer, we had the best summer session we've ever had uh, academically. So, I mean, we've got a ton of good students. You guys walk in and out of the door, you can see a bunch of GPAs up on the, the mm -hmm. 3.0 or above. You can take a picture of that. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, academic work. Not, not to get back to football, but... Uh, yeah, why would we want to do I, that, I, right? I missed the Narduzzi radio show last night. I saw something you mentioned about Jordan Whitehead on offense. Is that still something you guys are looking at? Yeah, we've always looked at. We've had it, you know. We had a little package in, and and uh, it's always going to be something that we will, we will, you know, I would think later on, you know, we pull it out. But it was funny because I, did, I didn't know what Cheney was telling him that we're not doing it until he catches the ball on defense. So, uh, which is a joke, but you know, it's funny. It's kind of a good point. Speaking of the coaches' show, you made an interesting comment about James. Uh, how how is he doing? He's doing good. I mean, he's mm -hmm. getting ready to roll. And, Play it day by day. You never know. He's getting close to six weeks, isn't he? Since post surgery. Um, Next week weeks, it'll be six probably, weeks. I think. It'll be six weeks, five weeks. Mm -hmm. Ever since he had the surgery. Mm -hmm. have, you, have, you had a dis have you had a discussion with him lately at all uh, about that? We kind of discussed little things every day. Mm -hmm. Our chance will be back. How's Jared doing? Jared's doing great. Doing great. He might be ready for the bowl game if you want to get it going. He's doing great. Could he start practicing for the season? Uh, he could, but you know, why? You know, he wouldn't play the bowl game. Wrong there, but he probably could. Uh, he probably could start practicing for the bowl game. James is squatting. He's got a squat. Sort of a random guy. But Alan Edwards, I think 
a red shirt this year, but that case is a guy I just think will play at Duke take a red shirt. Little, it was a little bit of both. I mean, it was probably week three and week four. We toyed with putting him down you know, with the defense. You know, it's just a mental thing. Athletic he's a freak. He's got to be a really good player for the next two years. And so is Dwayne Hendricks. Uh, but it was really, just, <coughs> excuse me, more mental than physical thing. Yesterday he had one heck of a play. His one to chop him uh, on pass that he just doesn't really chop over the years. You know, he doesn't seem to have to do that. So he's got, he got to, you know, and again, another year he's going to be so much better. So it's kind of like we can mess with him now. Like, give him a kind of another midseason tryout. And mentally, is what we end up getting. So you're better off playing with the lesser athletes. Those are the really great athletes that like to play and stick it to you. They were close. You never know. You know, you have to take some pictures of the guys last game of the season. You never know. I mean, it all depends on the injury. Hopefully, hopefully. A couple of weeks ago, you, or maybe once or twice, you had Reggie on your injury list, but he wasn't on last week and he didn't play. Is his injury a little more serious than what you originally thought? You know, great question. Um, you know, I don't think they more serious than what we thought. Uh, but uh, and I guess maybe more precautions. I'll leave it at that. Will he play this week? We got some make it delay. We like to get it. We like to get it. Oh, yes. I was supposed to ask you about Levy on Bell. Can you talk a little bit about him and what he meant to the program? You know, both on and off the field, and specifically if his patient running style was a little, a little difficult, you know, for a defense to handle. No, he is a very patient back there. Sometimes he'd get up there and dance, 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 and then bang, and then he'd hurdle someone. But, you know, Le'Veon Bell, you know, first of all, was a super, super kid. For all the years he was up there, he was best. And uh, there's not a better kid we had in the program. And he's one of those guys that just loves the game of football. He's not a guy that's played football because he's a patient. He's playing football because he loves the, the game of football. Uh, he's, he's like I said, he's a great kid. He's fun, always smiling. What you see on game day, what you see, you see probably every day out of the guy, uh, has, has a blast. And the one thing you remember about Le'Veon is just his mode of practice. That guy practices like he plays. And you know, I'll remember some late scrimmages late in his career, whether it be the spring game or his last year at State or the last scrimmage before the season started. You know, our coaches try to take him out of the game. It's like I'm sitting up in the press box, you know, calling a scrimmage. Well, why is he still in the game? What are we doing? Trying to get this guy hurt or something? But he wouldn't come out. He just, you know, he's a guy that likes to likes to play the game. He just loves football. Uh, you know, he's he's a he's a football rat. So he's got a, he's got a motor and he's got a great work, work ethic. As you can tell by the way he looks, he looks juice. Up. Did he adopt that patient style here, or did he always have that in college? No, I don't know. You know, I can't. I don't remember his freshman year, but I would imagine that's his style and what he's always done. He's been very patient to find a hole. And I, I think if I recall, there was some times where. Our, our running back coach and offensive coordinator was like, hey, Le'Veon, will you just hit it up in there, too? You know, sometimes you can, you know, run into a wall, just hit it up in there. But then it went on. You just remember seeing him go up there, go up there, and you're like, oh, there's nothing there. All of a sudden, whoop, he found something. So he's always been a patient runner. I'm not sure if that's something he developed there. As a coordinator, is that something you have to look out for? If you as a coordinator. It's hard to look for it. I mean, you got to play defense, and you got to hit your gaps, and you got your D-line's got to penetrate and, and, and do the job. But, uh, you know, you, know, you can't look you coach, you talk about it where you might not hit it as fast. Everybody's got to be more patient with where they've got to hit it. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't know. One, as soon as you start to be patient, you know, he sticks it up in there. It all depends on what holds you. You know, the, thing, the interesting thing about Le'Veon Bell, as you think, is in all his years here, there's not ever, okay, you've got to go back and look at it. There was never an NFL off the line. So it wasn't like he had, you know, he was looking at some of those Alabama tailbacks and you know, got some of the NFL line. Everything they need really is 
that cafeteria got really we talked about we addressed the situation too you, you never know what's going to happen the DNC the DNC doesn't have you know, some legal vitamins but it's not legal by the NCAA so you don't ever know but uh, you know we have our trailers got little I don't know what it was called but you can go through and go in our kid box and just, you know scan it kind of like we scan you know stuff just to see if it's hey that's still good you know oh this is good so yeah they got something like that so it's amazing the technology you have so you know we try to you know make sure we check out our kids and make sure we know what they're taking and that's a trainer's job or a trade person's job I haven't been down to locker room Thanks, Pat.